You know, when I interviewed K Born, he said that from what he remembers from seeing at that time, he said that, you know, the Latinos were going to different parties. So he basically kind of confirmed what you were saying when you went to the high school and you saw what the crowd was looking like. He said that yeah. they would go to different parties and they would be listening to music more like the A E I O U, like th that type of style of music. Um, even mm -hmm. though the break dancing and the graffiti, they were heavily involved with. Man, wrote a clip. To be so when you look you at the people, though, the people that were actually at the park, you know, the park jams, right? The people that may not have been doing the dancing and everything, but the people that came there to enjoy themselves and support. Was it mainly African-Americans or was there a lot of Latinos there enjoying and, and, and the entertainment? Okay, now when we went to the jams, right? You, outside jam, you know, outside of everybody. So the outside jams, everybody will go to the jams. So you have the Latin people, the Spanish people there, right? Now, we all hanging out. When we start playing our radio on the block, when it ain't no jams, all the people that listen to hip hop is the African Americans. We down here. All the people that listen to A, E, I, O, U, house music, which was the Latins, and got the web old boots on, and they got their little joint on. My man Johnny up there. My boy came out with, I'll house you. Girl, I'll house you. You know what I'm saying? Me being all them. You had S. I. Loca, Dale, Webo. I was down with them too. But they was down the block. We all hung out together. But when that radio came on, yo, Mr. Magic, all the brothers just ran this way. And all of them ran that way. And when we all hung out, like I said, we all hustled together. We all selling weed and all that together. Yo, y'all, we going to go to a party. Where we going? And yo, all the black brothers got together. We all throwing out outfits. And we all going to Skate Key, Skate Fever, uh, uh, the Latin Quarters, somewhere. All the Latin people that we hung out with, including my baby mother, and whatever Latin female, whoever I was going out with, they all was going to 1018, Studio 40, uh, uh, 54, the La Mirage and all of those clubs. And we all would meet up later on that night and go to White Castles and where we going. We all went to separate clubs. So they need to stop that, man. I don't know how they sit here and get on this internet and be saying that. I don't know how Fat Joe can say that either and being Latin. You can't get one person in his family to get on there and sit next to him and, and, and uh, co-sign him saying that. Yeah, correct. They were. Also, I would add on to say that there was there was there was there was tension between the black community and the Latino community during those days. It wasn't just a kumbaya thing. You understand what I'm saying? I would, you know, I can remember some of the the early days when when Latinos was coming into the black communities. You know, for the black community, that was that was a whole new thing. Like. Whoa, we wasn't used to that. We wasn't used to that culture or that nationality. So, you know, we would always, you know, gesture at them or not make them feel uncomfortable. So I remember those early days. And then as the Latino community started to grow and become empowered, you know, they too started discriminating against blacks and, you know, calling us Moranos and niggas. And, and, you know, there was a tension between you know, the black and Latino community, even though we had to live amongst each other, but there was often some people who broke away from that tension and, you know, they united and were able to build friendships and stuff like that. And that's how we ended up, you know, being able to, you know, um, come together more frequently because some people broke those connections, but it was a lot of tension between black and Latino in those days because of the cultural differences. Well, and you're you're talking about growing up in the Bronx, so you had mm -hmm. a heavy amount of both sides then. Yeah. Yes, sir, I did. I did. So that's why I feel privileged because, you know, I grew up with both entities and I could elaborate on both sides from my time period, from, you know, my experiences only. 